This week on Conquest 200. Growing typical whitetails is extremely difficult. I don't have a clue on what I want to do. I have never in all the years seen him oh. this excited. Come here. That's the buck of the farm. This is Doug Roberts. He's raised some of the largest typical whitetails in North America. With his wife, Karen Roberts, CEO of Conquest Scents, they manufacture and produce the best hunting scents in the world. From a family deer farm to the leading scent company in the hunting industry, world-class whitetail genetics and God by their side, this is Conquest 200. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Kia Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. Can I pray with you before you? Yep, let's pray right head now. Head into the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We know everything that's going to take place, and we pray for a hedge of protection around the guys out there working and the deer coming up. This is an intense situation, and nerves are high, so I, I pray that things will go smoothly and according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, good okay. luck. Yellow. For Doug Roberts, the white-tailed deer falls just under God and family. It's his passion for antlers that sparked this mission to grow 200-inch typical whitetails. And for the past two decades, he's been doing just that. Pairing genetics is a strenuous and time-consuming process and growing typical antlers is even that much more difficult. Growing typical whitetails is extremely difficult because it's a recessive trait. So what it takes to lock typical genetics in is stacking it on top of itself. But when you do that, if there's even one little non-typical point or characteristic, you're stacking that little thing also. The genetic part of our farm, a lot of times kind of gets a sidebar to all the activity that goes on here. And actually it's where Doug is at his best. It is a mind-boggling, intrinsic puzzle that has to be put together every year. Every year, Doug makes permanent decisions as to the future of his whitetail herd. Choosing a specific straw of semen and matching it based on the ancestry of the doe, which will be artificially inseminated, alters his genetic line forever. 240, 241. With the culmination of these decisions not being seen for two to three years, it's easy to see why Doug spends so much time studying each deer's lineage. Here's what I love doing. I love working with the genetics. Now, I'm not manipulating genetics. What I'm doing is I'm taking the genetics that the deer has and what other genetic lines can I take and blend them together to create better offspring, greater bucks. Now's the time to do it because I'm selecting breeder bucks. Yellow 96. Conquest. So the short tine, wide yearling buck, green 258 is out of brow tine, and the mother is a Conquest. Yellow 99, Conquest. <laughs> They're both Conquest. Doug always selects five of Conquest Deer Farm's top whitetail bucks 
to perform as backup bucks. <laughs> Conquest. Blue 205. <laughs> Are you serious? Conquest. I, I was kind of amazed. All of the moms were Conquest daughters. I'm not getting much of a selection on the female side, am I? Uh, I've cleared things up. It's clear as mud right now on what I want to do. I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. Only the best of the best will be placed in a pen with a herd of does for the duration of the rut, just in case the AI process doesn't take. There is a three-year-old buck in the back that at times caught my eye, and then other times I would see it and it was like, eh. And then all of a sudden it hit me, I went, you know, what I haven't done is really went and taken some time with the Vortex Optics and studied that deer. I need to try to get ear tags of those two yearlings and that three-year-old. I want to know the genetic background of them. Potentially, they are going to go into breed pens as backup bucks. What I don't want to do is get two or three backup bucks all out of the same dad. To try to get close enough with binoculars and zero in on a, on a tag is really difficult to do. And you couldn't do it all year long. Where did this deer come from genetically? Let's see what we got. I'm looking at the computer and I just bust out laughing. I, I'm in disbelief that this deer has been staring at me in time. What? I have never in all the years seen him oh. this excited. Come here. That's the buck of the farm. This changes everything. This segment was brought to you by New Dart because you can't afford to miss. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1. By Nadifa and Armada Grain Company. By Revive Microbials and by Dunkel Veterinarian Service. See, they both have the two-year-old and the three-year-old, or AI to Surefire and Big Ben, both white 244. So the three-year-old 10-point up front, his mom is a Conquest daughter, white 244. The tall eight-point, two-year-old, which is a Big Ben son, his mother is also white 244 Conquest. Doug Roberts is in the process of choosing his last breeder buck on Conquest Deer Farm. So what sh it shows me is she's producing bucks that I like the looks of. Not that they're the biggest, but the looks that I like. Uh, so she may have to stay in the breeding program. Only the best of the best are selected for the breeding program, as the future of his entire genetic line depends on them breeding should the AI process not take. Once in a while, at the end of the day, Doug and I will treat ourselves to a perimeter ride around the farm. And doing that through the spring, he kept showing me a buck. And I guess I kind of nicknamed him Moose because I've just never seen anything like it. And Doug paid somewhat attention to him, but he had high profile deer that he was paying more attention to. and. Once he got the tag number off that deer, I have never in all the years seen him this excited. You aren't gonna believe this. Take a good look at that deer. Are you kidding me? Look at the frame on that deer. Look at how this tine comes forward. That deer we're looking at is a son of the gun, son. It's him, AI. It was like he was a schoolboy jumping up and down, going onto the playground for the first time. I mean, my goodness. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I was so happy for him too, to find out he was a true son, going back to son of the gun. He's in. <laughs> As soon as you look at him, I mean, it's so obvious that it's his son, but it's three generations line bred, which is very, very rare. 
Having been in the deer industry for over 25 years, Doug has a head start on generational lines. Breeding the same straws over several generations locks in genetic traits, which is crucial when trying to prevent non-typical antler points from growing. The challenge is to create this masterpiece, which consists of recessive traits. The challenge is to create that, but have have the knowledge and understanding and the perseverance and determination to keep out the dominant traits, which are not typical. Doug often discusses decisions and strategies with Randy Barks, a friend and fellow whitetail enthusiast, to help narrow down possible outcomes when selecting straws of semen. Well, Randy Barks has been a, the whole family has been an extremely close friend of mine for, for many, many years. Most of the time I've been in the deer business. But Randy has the unique ability and he has passed that on to his sons. Uh, and Tara is the same way. They are studiers of the deer industry. We have been so determined to, to, to heap up all these recessive traits. But what we've done is simultaneously doubled, tripled, many, many times over um, all the dominant traits. Well, now we're in a bind because we've dug the pit deep. We've put dominant on dominant on dominant for 15 and 20 generations. No wonder you can hardly find a clean typical. Although Doug has years of experience, there is no handbook when it comes to pairing genetics. It often consists of years of trial and error, as well as hope and a little bit of luck that the results will be what Doug imagines in his head. He's taught me how to look further back and look for those little things. Like I said, that little hook. Um, if you want squeaky clean, you can't have the hook. You know, that triton head, bucko head. We're not doing things any different than what we're trying to do in the wild and hunting properties, right? We call those management hunts. Take out that buck, we don't want him breeding, right? It's just that we have the advantage of being way more strategic and seeing the results a whole lot quicker. And in that, the wild hunt uh, properties benefit tremendously from what we're doing. This segment was brought to you by Henchart Chiropractic. We get your back in the game. This week's tip from the Deer Professor is brought to you by High Rack Ranch of Michigan. You know, when you talk about a new world record typical whitetail, um, the Hanson buck has been the world record for a long time. And it's gonna take a very unique buck to, to beat that. Now, if you look at the Mark Hammer buck, for example, it ended up having just enough non-typical antler growth, even though it had a world record class typical frame to take it out of the record book. And that is because non-typical traits are dominant traits. So look for an area somewhere in the country that doesn't have non-typical antlers, dominant traits, and you'll have better luck trying to shoot the next world record typical. After finally selecting this year's breeder bucks, Doug Roberts has a full itinerary in order to make it happen. Um, that big feeder, pick that up, move that, okay? Um, put it up by those two bales of hay for right now. We'll leave them there for the winter. Every hunter and every deer farmer has that perfect picture of that perfect buck in their mind. Every one of us. Ever since I was uh, a young boy starting to hunt with my dad, I loved the typicals, but I loved the 10s and the 12s. The six by six typical 
has always intrigued me. Over the years, a few whitetails have stood out among the rest. These bucks were the building blocks for Doug's whitetail herd, and keeping their genetic line going is of the utmost importance. When you look at genetics, um, non-typical is a dominant trait. Typical is a recessive trait. So it's very difficult to continually pass on typical antler structure. Discovering a three-year-old buck whose genetics trace back to one of Doug's favorite set of antlers is an answer to prayer. For 15 years, I have been trying to create that buck, that specific deer. And what it is, it's a three-generation line-bred son-of-the-gun son to a conquest daughter. Last year, Doug artificially inseminated his entire whitetail herd to Superstar, a huge Texas typical, in hopes of adding width and height to his already massive antlers. Now I'm excited uh, for the potential uh, of reintroducing the son of the gun line back into my herd uh, very strongly. You know, Sunday mornings, I, I like to go and take my time and go around the perimeter, and I noticed this buck was off by himself. Head up alert, but just wasn't with the rest of the bucks, and they had been together the entire time. So a little odd, but not um, anything totally alarming. Monday morning, again, I go and do perimeter check, now he's laying on the fence line and he's never wanted to be close to a four wheeler. And as I'm going around the perimeter, he's just bedded there. Uh oh, are you serious? And his right ear is hanging down. And I went, oh man. With his dream buck in disarray, Doug has a decision to make. This segment is brought to you by Beam Fence Company. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1. By United Deer Farmers of Michigan. By Vortex Optics and Grizzly Coolers. Before I went out and darted him, I actually called Kurt Dunkel from Dunkel Veterinary Clinic because this is a buck I cannot afford to have die. And I really wanted to kind of pick his brain. I told him what I've seen, uh, how he's acting. Um, so he kind of told me the drugs that he would give so we can kind of hit all the different combinations. Doug Roberts has darted one of his top breeder bucks after noticing what seems to be an infection. Once discovered, the Conquest team moved quickly in hopes of avoiding any further complications. This buck was especially important to Doug after he discovered its genetic line goes back to Son of the Gun and Young Gun, two of the best whitetails to ever contribute to the Conquest whitetail herd. I couldn't find anything wrong with him. Um, so I basically gave him some of my antibiotics, some vitamins, you know, kind of gave him a broad spectrum uh, of products, but we couldn't find any infection. Um, we couldn't smell any infection. Um, but he just didn't seem right. One, two, three. Straighten his neck out. Wait. You're going to go to the outside. Got him into the backwoods, got him on the sand, nice and cool, and, and reversed him and just thought, you know, a couple hours I'll, I'll check on him and make sure he's doing okay. He was laying up by these brush piles. Well, I see him. Doggone it. He's dead. Oh, it seriously takes the wind out of you. It's a crushing blow. Doug's third generation son of the gun breeder buck has passed. Man, my heart broke for him. Like, wow, it's defeat magnified. 
with heartache. You know, it's like the most excitement I've seen in him ever. And the buck dies. How do you make sense out of that? You know, I've been doing this deer farming for 25, 26 years, long time. And it's finally, years ago, you could handle the death loss. You'd be like, okay, it happens, but you just had energy level. But I have to say at this point, I'm running out of energy on the death loss part. I guess hard. Um, I guess maybe as I've done it longer and, and you put all of the effort and work into a buck like that, line breeding him three generations deep, and there's nothing wrong one day, there's something that's odd, and he's dead the next day. There's a part of me that doesn't feel like dealing with that anymore, but then there's another part of me that refuses to give up. For Doug Roberts, passion and enthusiasm can often turn to disappointment and heartache. It's these difficult moments which help forge the fire to try again. And although this buck will never contribute to Conquest Deer Farm in the way Doug had hoped, the lessons he learned along the way will live on. That is unbelievable. Providing his entire farm and the future of its genetic line, a hope cannot be created by spreadsheets alone.